guys, it's your boy Luke, here for our round 2 prize picks targets for the Memorial Tournament. Round 1 was a resounding success, went 4 for 5 on our main card, our 4 leg power play went 4 for 4, hit for a 10x parlay, so cannot complain from the ROI side. The golf was also excellent, this is one of my favorite venues on the PGA Tour, Jack's Place, Muirfield Village, one of the more difficult tracks that we see all year, and as a result, going to be pure entertainment throughout the weekend. In terms of this video, we'll be going over my top five props here for Friday's round, and of course, how I expect the golf course to play. We'll talk about the weather a little bit, of course, what we saw from round one, and some of the scoring averages, fairway percentages, JIR percentages that I'm looking at here for the second round. So whether you're making your own cards, looking to tail the five-leg card that I give towards the end, you should be completely prepared to go and attack this prize pick slate. So a lot to talk about that I want to get into here. Let's go ahead and hop right on into it. All right, we've got data golf on the screen. And first, just want to take a look at the scoring average, which for round one was plus 0.73, a little bit easier than what we saw for last year's Memorial Tournament, but I would expect that to get even more difficult throughout the weekend. The main reason this iteration of the Memorial is going to play a little bit more difficult than what we've seen in the past are the greens. Jack Nicholas has made it very clear that he intends to run these greens a lot faster than we've seen in 2020 and 2021. Um, as the surfaces, the grass has grown in, gone a little bit, quote unquote, broken in by the players over the last two years, it's now at a point where it's healthy enough where they can start to dry it out. And when they dry it out, it's not going to completely die off. If you remember, there was a renovation at this golf course just back in 2020. So the first few years of a golf course's life, you know, renovation or, of course, after it's founded, you can't do anything crazy with it. But now that it's had more time to get acclimated, um, Jack obviously feels a little bit more comfortable with doing that sort of thing. So scoring average, I'd expect it to play closer to 1.5 shots over par, and that becomes especially evident when we split this by wave. So in the morning, it played to right around a third of a stroke over par, and then in the afternoon, it played 1.1 shots over par. So of course, a lot of that was due to the receptiveness of these greens. There was quite a bit of rain through the area on Wednesday, which... Video for this came out on Tuesday morning, so we probably didn't talk about that. It was in the forecast, though, um, so that's why it played easier for round one. For round two, it's going to play at least as difficult as it did here in the afternoon, if not even more difficult if the greens are getting a little bit firmer and faster, like Jack Nicholas has promised to us. So that's from the golf course perspective, from a scoring average perspective. The greens, because they're getting firmer, I'd expect them to get harder to hit. So today it was right around a 61% JAR percentage, might be closer to like 57, 58% tomorrow. And the fairway percentage was slightly lower than what we had for 2021. It was in the 60s rather than the 70.2% average that we had from last year. A lot of that is due to the width of these fairways and fairway percentage doesn't change all that much from round to round. While they can get slightly firmer and faster, it's not going to make five, six percent difference, right? You know, maybe one, one and a half percent difference from round around that sort of thing, but not anything drastic. The weather here for the second round is extremely similar to what we saw on Thursday. Um, very low wind gusts for much of the day. The sustained winds are just in that three to eight miles an hour range for the entire day. And you can see for Thursday, it was a very similar set of conditions. In fact, maybe even slightly more difficult. The reason why the scoring average is going up are because of those greens, right? That makes a huge impact on the golf course. Um, and it's not like this 12, 14 miles an hour wind gust that you had towards midday um, is really gonna cause players troubles to begin with, right? You know, it's gotta get into that 15 to 20, um, maybe even like 25 to 30 mile an hour range um, to really start to cause these players problems. So um, wind isn't going to be a huge factor for the second round. Um, the golf course is still going to have plenty of teeth. Um, we've seen that over the years. And now finally, let's talk about my favorite prop. So heading over to the prize picks board, um, it's going to be some of these birdie or better matchups. And rather than going ahead and putting the all the props on the screen together, I'm not gonna do that. People just end up skipping to this part of the video, just look at my picks and tail them. That's not the point of these. 
Point is to give you my actual reasoning behind these picks so you can go out there, make an educated decision about your tail, not just blindly do so. I have no interest in people going out there and doing that. That's not responsible gambling. And uh, that's what we're going to do here with the videos from here on out. And uh, I think a lot of you, of course, appreciate this analysis. And uh, just, I can't, I can't support people that are blindly tailing others. I mean, even if you're tailing myself, which It'd be a more responsible tale than most people out there. It's just, it's the premise. So the first prop I had was John Rom the over on his matchup. That, was, of course, was the one prop that we got wrong today. So John Rom got edged out by a Davis Riley. Riley made six birdies today. John Rom, of course, made five. So it's not like he played poorly. It's just that Davis Riley was an absolute buzzsaw, went off. In fact, the last time we played a matchup card, I think I mentioned it during the video yesterday. Davis Riley was the one that spoiled Scotty Scheffler. So, you know, he has the knack for doing this. Perhaps it's just my, you know, one, one willingness to go out there and try to go for the blood, as they say. In another circumstance, I'm going for revenge. I mean, this is a prop that I would take nine times out of ten. You're talking about the world number two matched up with somebody that, sure, is an up-and-coming prospect on the PGA Tour. But at the same time, you know... From a 50-50 perspective, if we're just going to go ahead and project this out 100 times, you know, John Rahm is winning this 61 plus times, if not closer to 70% of the time. So for me, it is a slam dunk pick, something that, of course, we took here for the first round, but something I'll also be targeting here for the second. Next matchup I have my eye on is going to be Colin Morikawa there against Mark Leishman. And Leishman has not been in the best form. He's been at best finishing in the 30s or 40s when it comes to his finishes the last month. A few missed cuts mixed in there as well. And in general, Colin Morikawa, though he's not the most flashy player, the ball striking has been there of late. He's been in plenty of positions to make birdies. The one missing piece has been the flat stick. He has not putted the ball well over the last three to four months at this point. It's been quite a stretch of bad putting for Morikawa. The one real bright spot for him are the greens here at Mirafield Village. They are relatively familiar to him. Of course, he won the workday here um, there in 2020, which is a different event, but it's also played at Mirafield Village, or at least was in 2020. And then the week after that, for this exact event, ended up finishing in second place. So that's two top two finishes. He loves Nicholas Designs. Um, loves the greens at Nicholas Designs, which tend to be undulating fast greens, right? We were talking a lot before about how firm and fast these greens are going to get, and that's exactly the type of greens that Colin Morikawa thrive on. You've seen it at these Nicholas Designs, the Open Championship, another golf course that was running extremely firm and fast. Um, so I just, you know, a ton of reasons to buy in on him this week. So against Mark Leishman, who's been struggling over the last few weeks, somebody who has a ton of upside given how good the ball striking has been, is certainly making my card here for the next round. Another prop I had my eye on was Rory McIlroy. had the over against Aaron Wise. And today, Rory hit the over against Keith Mitchell. Keith Mitchell made four birdies, I believe. Rory ended up making five or six on the day. And I'd expect that to continue tomorrow. This is a great course fit for Rory McIlroy. Somebody who's long off the tee, has the approach play we're looking for, and has an early morning tee time. So we'll be teeing off in the best conditions possible. And Aaron Wise, though the ball striking, is kind of similar to a Rory McIlroy, another very solid player, just somebody who's maybe a little bit more inconsistent, right? Not the best putter, doesn't really cash in on those opportunities nearly as often as a Rory McIlroy, who's an electric putter, and particularly over his last 24 measured rounds, has been absolutely electric with making those birdies, is making those 10 to 15 footers like we saw from Rory McIlroy in his prime. And that's why he's been posting all of these top finishes. So for me, a very solid spot to target here for the second round um, and makes my card for sure. Next up, we have Jordan Spieth, who I'm taking the over on against Keith Mitchell. And I'm, of course, a huge Jordan Spieth fan. But from a shots gained perspective, you're not going to find a hotter player. He's gaining over a two, sorry, three quarters of a stroke per round and off the tee approach and around the green. So all the tee to green categories, he's gaining over three quarters of a stroke per round over his last 24 rounds. That is unprecedented. Is by far the best tee to green player that anyone in the field. Second place, I believe, was like two shots per round. Um, I forget who that was. Actually, it was Rory McIlroy. He's number two, right? So we're obviously targeting the number one and two player when it comes to shots gained tee to green. And if you look at shots gained tee to green this year, 
You know, John Rahm's up there in the top five, and Colin Morikawa's up there in the top ten. So not a surprise to see all of these players here in this pool. And Keith Mitchell, a very streaky player, you know, kind of reminds me of a Davis Riley and the fact that he can get really hot really fast, but he can also run really cold really fast. So I mean, if we're looking at a 50-50 type of prop like we have here with a matchup, the more consistent play is certainly going to be Jordan Spieth, who's one of the best birdie makers on the PGA Tour. Even when he's not playing solid golf or consistent golf might be the better way to put it, he's going out there and making a ton of birdies. So pretty much no matter whether he has his game or not, I expect him to go out there and have some success. So he's going to make our pool and our card here for the second round. And the last prop we took was Shane Lowry. So he's against Siwoo Kim. He had a solid day today, ended up shooting three under par. I believe made four or five, maybe even six birdies on the day. I'd have to double check on it. But in either circumstance, he's up against Siwoo Kim, who made, only made three birdies. And Siwoo Kim, a little bit more of a par maker than a birdie maker. And while he can get extremely hot, more often than not, he's just grinding out those pars. Whereas Shane Lowry, one of the better putters we have on tour, um, one of the best players we've had on tour over the last three months, where he's number two in the field in shots gained total over the last 24 rounds, and he's number one in the field in shots gained total over his last 50 rounds. So no matter what type of sample size we look at, short term or relatively long term, he's going to be popping in our models. So given that he's going against you know, more consistent player, not necessarily somebody who's known for that birdie or better percentage. He's coming in with the form that he has. He would have hit the over today against Jisibu Kim. I don't see a reason to avoid this prop, right? Um, so like him there at that price tag. And with these five props in here, it doesn't say it down here because I do have a free entry that's kind of blocking it up. This pays out for 10x. So if I was going to make any extra cards, I'd make some four leg powers. Um, if I was going to take any of these props out, I probably would take Colin Morikawa out just because um, Mark Leishman is a little bit of a madman. He can get super hot in a hurry. And uh, Morikawa does have the weak, worst putter of the bunch, right? Rom has been pretty decent of late with the flat stick. He likes bent grass. Um, McElroy Spieth should putt the ball well here. And uh, Lowry has been an excellent putter for a while. So um, again, if I was going to run that four-leg power, which I will be tomorrow, um, that's going to be without Colin Morikawa. And if I was going to run a three-leg power, the next man out would be John Rom, right? Of course, that matchup with Davis Riley could be a little bit dangerous for us, but I'll be running these bottom three here for my three-leg power. All right, that's all I've got for the round two picks. Before you hop on out of here, first off, make sure you smash the like button. But second off, make sure you let me know your favorite prop on the board down in the comments. I appreciate all the support as per usual. We'll have you covered for round three and four over the weekend, so make sure to stay tuned for that. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel here, I definitely recommend you go ahead and do so. That way you don't miss any of the content I'm posting in the future, including those prize picks previews for rounds three and four. Best of luck with all of your slips here for the second round, and let's get this cash.